So I'm going to be kind of out of frame doing this, or trying to be partially out of frame. Um, if I'm still in the shot, then so be it. Uh, I got this unit out, uh, the sending unit. This is a 2002 Grand Cherokee WJ, I think. Um, basically the sending unit, and it has a it has a pocket here where the fuel pump sits and then the the sock is in here um, you take this off and then that grants you access to there uh, that little piece that I showed you earlier I can't remember who I got this from but it's a bulkhead 3 8 barb to 10 dash 10 um, Basically what I want to do is hopefully it, with any luck I'll be able to shove a Walbro 450 in here. Um, this is not at all planned. I don't know if it's been done before so we'll see how it goes. All right, so this is what I'm looking at in the cab. Um, this is too small to feed the power that I want. It's not like particularly small, but it is small. And there's, I assume, a regulator in here um, that regulates pressure, which I don't want. So I'm going to use that by that bypass, or sorry, bulkhead, and. I'm going to go ahead and use that bulkhead in here. If I can get that junk out. Um, the only problem is, is this is like paper thin. So I'm going to use, I'm going to get this out of there and then I'll show you guys where I'm at with it. Um, we'll go from there. Basically, what I want to do is use one of these reinforced pieces. And that's where I'll put the bypass, or the, keep saying bypass, bulkhead through there, so. Alright, so I bored the center hole, the original one that, uh, they had this regulator deal sitting in. I bored that out because I didn't want to run into anything. And I put it, you know, it's basically right in the middle of the thing. And plus it's webbed there. This is actually a bigger circumference. I may have to cut some of these uh, ribs down so that the nut will go on there good. But it's reinforced there and it's in tight so that it, this uh, actually screws in and out. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be that way but uh, tight is right. So um, I need to go to the uh, auto parts store and these are PTFE so they should be good for fuel but I need to get some sort of sealer um, like an RTV that would be good for like ethanol 
Uh, I don't really know what my options are. I've never really done anything like this, but I'm sure they make some sort of sealer that is rated for gasoline. So um, I'm just going to clean this and leave it here. And then uh, once we figure something else out, then we will um, go from there. Get this tightened, and I'm not actually going to run the return in this because it's a pain to work with. I'm going to drill a hole in the tank with another one of these uh, bungs and uh, basically cut a hole in the tank and then run the return line into the top of the tank. Um, far away from this so it doesn't heat soak my fuel. Because if I had it run into here and had my return run just into here too, it would heat all the fuel in the bottom of that bowl there and um, on a hot day it may boil it because it just continually feeds and returns uh, the same fuel and just keeps continually heating that up so I don't want that issue I'm going to run it somewhere else out of the way and hopefully that won't cause us any issues I also wanted to show that I had to kind of notch these just so it was flat so that this uh, nut surface could go in there without bottoming out on these. Alright, I've got it all tore apart and I'm still working on it. Um, I wanted to show you guys this bulkhead fitting. Um, I bought it offline and it said it was good for fuel. It's it's a uh, pure machine bare aluminum, so it's not good for fuel. Um, don't attempt to use this on anything that has any ethanol in it. It'll just eat it. Uh, so I'm not using this. I was planning to use that, but you know, I didn't have a good feeling about it being aluminum. I went to the local like hydraulics fitting place, bought some push lock elbows. Um, and then some other odds and ends. From a uh, local hardware. Basically, this is a bulkhead fitting, a push lock bulkhead fitting. Um, so what I'm going to do is run this in through here. Like that, tighten it down on both sides. I've got a couple of nylon washers to go on either side and then I've got this gasket maker which is fuel resistant um, if you read the package. Uh, don't use regular RTP, it'll just swell. So, what I'm going to do is this big half inch one, I've got two of them. This is half inch. I'm going to run this through here, like that, with them washers and the machine washers to kind of, because this is flimsy. This, uh, I don't really trust this, so I'm going to put washers on either side to kind of support it and then goob up that uh, gasket maker on it. And uh, the second, like the return line, like I said earlier, I'm going to run through the tank top, which will just be out of the way. Um, we'll do the same thing, stack washers. I've got some uh, nylon washers in there and I've also got some machine washers. Uh, I tried to find stainless steel, there wasn't any, so we'll wing it. I'm sure I'll be out of pump before I even get this thing running and have to put two wall rows in it or something stupid, so we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So it'll look kind of like that. Um, I've got to get a female half inch uh, half inch national pipe thread female into 3 8 barb fitting so that I can run the uh, fuel injection hose up from 
the Wabra. Unfortunately, my local auto or uh, hardware did not have one of those, so um, I ordered a couple off Amazon. That should be here by the weekend, which would be no big deal. I'm not gonna put this video out till the weekend anyway. So um, I got orders a couple other stupid little things. I was going to take these out and. Um, basically knock, knock them out and then run quarter inch studs through stainless but the hole that they have in them is bigger than quarter inch so they'd be floppy in there and I don't really want that so I think I'm just going to reuse them and if I have voltage drop issues then I will have to put like a 3 8 stud in there or something um, because they're about 3 8 stud size which would be fine. I could go get that, but um, for now, with you know my goals of just getting it running, um, we're gonna do that. That's got more than enough to carry the amount of amperage that this is gonna draw. After about the fifth or sixth hardware run, I have some more stuff. These are stainless steel studs. Um, you can see I've got them anchored in with grommets, which are a quarter inch grommet with a 9 16th opening on the outside dimension. Um, what I plan to do here is put a washer here and here, washer here and here, and then put two, put a nut on either side and wedge them down until it's airtight um, and then I will put the wire eyelets on the inside they go down to the pump I'll put the wire eyelets on the outside nuts etc etc you guys get the picture um, obviously I'll cut the excess off here but um, I'm waiting on a female half inch uh, national pipe thread to three eighths um, barb fitting, which is what goes on here down to the fuel pump. So um, this video probably won't be out until Monday or Tuesday when I get those parts because I want to make it all one video and I don't want to break it up. Um, so when you guys see this, the next part will be having that and putting it on. Alright, so I finally got my national pipe thread to 3 8 hose barb. Uh, I actually got a 5 pack of them because that's the only way I could find them. But, um, Got that, now I'm going to put it in there and I'll show you guys what it looks like together. So that's about as tight as I, you know, trust the plastic to go. It's, it's very tight and like I said, I've got that moto seal on here. You know, basically all around that hole, top and bottom. This is supposed to be fuel resistant. Never tried it. Uh, it was just when I typed in Google. Uh, fuel resistant sealer that came up so I went to the local shop and bought some so I'm going to assemble the rest of the carrier and show you guys what it looks like I'm going to show you guys this too I had to pretty heavily modify that regulator assembly deal because this is used in the assembly of the sending unit so notch that all out Alright, <clears throat> super sweaty again. See it's sitting in there. Um, try to give you guys good light. You can see I put that moto seal over the pins there. Just for extra insurance. Uh, 450 hanging on there. Now I gotta just put the bottom on. So, I got a little impatient with the trim and cut process, but there she is. I'm going to put the cap back on, 
and we'll call her a day. All right, so 450 in a slightly modified sending unit. Um, have half inch JIC for a push lock style fitting. Two studs on there. I'm um, gonna uh, trim them once I you don't need to. Then I've got my two sending unit wires. And you can see right there that bulkhead fitting that is a 3 8 uh, bulkhead for a fuel return. I also did pick up a set of uh, 150 pound uh, Snake Eater performance injectors. They're 145s or whatever, uh, 1500 cc's. So my fuel system is pretty much wrapped up aside from the regulator which I still have to, uh, I'm still waiting for in the mail. And then I just got to put lines in it once I get the motor in. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you have any questions I'll try to answer them as best as possible. If your first time viewing you watched until now you might as well subscribe. And if you guys choose to continue to follow the build, then I'll see you on the next one. Thank you guys.